firstly, I'd like to uh, greet everybody and also especially greet to the previous two speakers. And Jose Antonio Marina, I'd never heard him talk before. It's incredible. The way he spoke so delightfully about education. And I've been in the education world for the last 17 years, but it's been internal education. Uh, the fact that it's so important for humankind. Education is really important. And for the other speaker, such a brilliant speech because um, when we get involved in the art of internal meditation, we can research human bodies in a different way, in a very profound way. And having seen all of this, it's incredible now to think how human intelligence, when it's used to serve others and used ethically and mindfully, it's incredible how it can help relieve suffering throughout the whole of the world. And that's actually really been the cornerstone of everything that I've been doing for the last 17 years. When I left aged 49, I went off to seek this kind of knowledge because I thought life was something a bit more than what our eyes could see. I think that I thought there was more than what I could see in my day-to-day -day life. I thought, well, you know, life can't just be this. There has to be more. And the straw that broke the camel's back and that made me abandon my previous life as an architect, as a um, businessman, was a, the death of a person who died at a site that belonged to me. And I realized what everything that surrounded that site required, something that never happened before. There was trade unions, police, and all sorts of things, the press. And I said, why, for example, the trade union came to see how workers were, uh, because we saw people uh, that, what happens when they uh, turn up and they've had a drink and they don't take any of sa health and safety, and all of a sudden, the world came crashing down around me. It was as if Everything that I had in my mind just disappeared. It was incredible. I said, no, 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 I don't want this kind of life. I think I need to understand better what humankind is all about, our minds, our consciousness. And I thought, okay, I'm just going to leave everything. I need to find out what's happening. And it wasn't easy. Just... Uh, abandoning everything that I had in my life and I spent 100% of my time because I said, no, there's no point if I if I do this half-heartedly. How did I do that? I took all the vows of Tibetan Buddhism. I became a monk and decided that I was going to spend my life just studying mind and consciousness because I thought that these people could offer me everything. They had the whole of the staircase that I could got. And after many, many years of research, I realized that it was in Tibetan Buddhism where all the knowledge about mind and consciousness was stored. And I hadn't, there was no doubt in my mind that that was what I needed to do. Everything went very quickly when I did that. I, I just left everything. I gave everything away, everything that I had materially, to my children, to friends, everything. I gave everything away. At that time, everybody thought, except for my children, that I'd actually lost my mind. No, I knew actually what I wanted to do. I didn't know how this knowledge that I could have would afterwards be able to help other people. When I left, I wasn't actually thinking of that. I never thought that I could actually uh, be here today with people listening to me, with teachers. I never thought of that. I thought, OK, I, I'm going to go. I'm going to go and be with these Buddhist Tibetan monks, and I'm going to spend the rest of my life there. So I left. I went and spent time with people exiled from Tibet, and I 
meditated to find out about internal knowledge. So today I want to see how I can contribute something for you, how you can uh, benefit from my uh, words, how I can uh, do something for you as teachers at the end of the day. What I've learned was uh, internal science, let's say. I had to uh, absolutely forget everything I had learned in the past. What uh, Mark Vidal said uh, yesterday, that's something that human beings can do and machines uh, can't with uh, whatever AI we have, is that we can always start from scratch. Obviously, this was one of the first things that my masters taught me. I had to uh, unlearn absolutely everything and start to learn again something new. I had to empty myself uh, to be able to have space for that uh, profound knowledge that they have uh, look, been uh, studying for hundreds and hundreds of years, and not uh, through dogma, but through a scientific method, through study and logic, through correct reasoning, through uh, looking into the kinds of uh, minds uh, are uh, correct and which ones are, which are valid minds and which ones aren't. And I realized that they were using what a scientist uh, use. A scientist uh, takes knowledge, which at the end of the day is the real way of getting to know what's our uh, cognitive capacity. And a scientist, through uh, correct reasoning supported on the data, can understand and also discover the end result before seeing it, like in the case of uh, him, the physicist, uh, through mathematical, logic, scientific studies, he could detect that possibly um, in the uh, particle accelerator, when they carried out other um, research, they would be able to observe that uh, fundamental uh, particle that he had already uh, reached the conclusion existed. And this is what my masters uh, taught me, the masters of uh, contemplative art. And I uh, happily can say that now there's the collaboration of a great uh, masters with uh, neuroscientists, for example, Richard Davidson, uh, Daniel Goleman, and other scientists that collaborate with the uh, contemplative masters to see how we can bring together the effort of uh, the West in technological progress and uh, development of the, the physical world and how this can be combined with the art of what was researched by contemplative uh, through the mind and awareness, how we can bring together these two sciences, the outside and inside sciences, to be able to improve the lives of human beings and to um, help uh, human beings suffer less and uh, so that the the um, alienated uh, mind can go back to where it has to be. And I believe this is something wonderful. I've been able to observe how what I've uh, learned with them about the mind and uh, consciousness, because for us that's the same thing, and in my life throughout the last 13 years, something that I didn't know was going to happen, I was able to help others. And it's not easy for Buddhist masters to 
be helping others out there. Sometimes they're not prepared. In my monastery, we were 25 uh, monks, and for many years I was the only one um, going outside and teaching meditation and the art of looking inwards to understand uh, yourself and how uh, things uh, work and can be uh, developed. Like Christopher uh, Koch uh, said, a materialistic neuroscientist that acknowledged in one of the, his uh, meetings with uh, Buddhist masters that in our scientific materialistic uh, world, no one has taught us to understand the mind, how it works, and how it can be developed, because that's incredible. And that, I believe, is something that uh, little by little has to be more present, because these techniques help and can help us in all spheres of life at any professional level, for example. Why? And very simple. Because if I learn to look inwards where I never look, where uh, we rarely uh, look at and we can understand a bit of how our mind works and how it can be developed, that developed mind with all of its uh, potential will be out there wherever it can be. For example, it can be the mind of a father, a scientist, a teacher, and it will be able to benefit us in its uh, sphere of our lives. It's not like uh, when uh, uh, people say, well, I've been here really well with you, but when I uh, leave this uh, monastery or this place, uh, what am I going to do later? And I tell them, well, we've tried to fix things so that uh, what you've learned is something that you can apply in your life afterwards. And this is everything I've uh, learned with this uh, great masters. Very recently, I... Uh, on the 27th of August, I decided uh, to uh, leave this part of my life. Uh, I uh, finished my psychology and uh, studies and my Indo-Tibetan uh, studies. And we not only study, but we meditate. And it's not only meditation, breathing, uh, or leaving your mind in uh, blank. No, we also talk about analytical contemplation. And it is through analysis that our mind is able to understand at a cognitive level. Uh, scientists, uh, big uh, uh, masters and professors have this capacity of reasoning, perceiving, and uh, deducting. It's uh, incredible. So. We all have that uh, uh, capacity, and when you are able to use all your uh, skills, it's incredible because you're able to put them at the service of others. We have five uh, uh, consciousness uh, that are linked to the senses and uh, one that is linked to the mind. They are... Uh, direct ways of uh, perceiving. We have this uh, five uh, doors to the physical world, let's say, to the sensory uh, world, and they are direct doors. We don't need to reflect on anything to listen, see, or hear, but your um, uh, mental uh, conscience is uh, uh, what brings us to the world of uh, feelings and emotions. This conscience is not a, a direct one, not a perceptive one, but a conceptual one. It's imaginative. To be able to understand something, I need to generate a mental image of what I want to get to know. So we talk, uh, work through concepts. This mm, mental conscience can be very much improved. It can be developed exponentially. This uh, six uh, uh, consciences are direct ones. 
So when they relate to one another, <coughs> we are looking at the generality of the object, but we are not uh, saying anything regarding what we are studying or hearing. But there are going to be other uh, elements in our mind that are the ones intervening. And th this is me explaining briefly what I've uh, learned uh, from my masters and that I could uh, uh, observe through meditation. Human beings are conditioned to, to see reality through a specific uh, uh, physical um, objects or events and to get to know reality we've had to use more and more precision techniques for example the uh, uh, microscope the first microscope allowed you to see for example something uh, when you looked at water or blood then we get to the electronic or atomic microscope so when the precision tool has improved to levels that are unknown uh, to me and that you use in the scientific sphere. Well, the same thing was done by uh, uh, the uh, monks in the study of the mind. There are objects that are uh, clearly seen, others that are hidden, and others that are very much hidden. For example, those that are hidden, like the behavior of particles or the existence of these uh, uh, particles, we've had to uh, manufacture the particle accelerators to be able to isolate these uh, particles like uh, uh, electrons and neutrons and protons and to make them move at very high speeds in this incredible machine to be able to produce a fusion, nuclear fusion, and uh, see what's happening there. But uh, they, uh, contemplatives have done the same thing with their mind. They've developed a, a precision because through meditation states, our mind is able to be uh, um, fine-tuned as uh, when we, for example, uh, polish the glass in a telescope. So we polish it more and more and more, and our mind is able to understand more and more and more. With your mind, with this only device uh, well stabilized and looking inwards, Many people, many scientists uh, of this internal world were able to directly perceive uh, reality. A highly concentrated mind looking inwards is able to even perceive the uh, non-substantiality of the physical uh, body. And why do I explain this? I do so so that you understand how uh, the human mind be, uh, is so uh, uh, incredible because we are um, amazed by all the uh, technical devices that are being developed, but our mind is even more incredible. One of these machines won't be able to create a mind, and our mind can do and work in favor of a uh, humankind. So going back to look inwards, uh, can uh, uh, allow us to be aware of our body. Our body is not only the way in which we perceive it uh, physically. This has already been explained by a scientist. Sonia Fernandez Biel, a physicist working at the CERN in Switzerland, says, look at your hand. It seems uh, that it doesn't change. But in fact, uh, the uh, human uh, body is made up of many parts. It's made up of atoms. Atoms have uh, neutrons, electrons, and protons. Everything is moving in the atom between the uh, nucleus and the electron. Here we have a void uh, area. So there's uh, 8 billion inhabitants. If uh, uh, we were able to remove 
the uh, empty part in ourselves, the rest of solid material could be uh, put in a um, uh, sugar um, cube. And then what are we? Because our mind is made up of uh, thoughts uh, and it has incredible capacities. We have uh, the possibility of reasoning and doing everything we do in our lives, what we do with our minds, everything we observe in the physical world, all the mm, technological developments that are incredible and that we thought was incredible to achieve. But all of this has been achieved by the human mind. The mind is made up of different uh, mind moments. A moment in our mind is created by the previous moment and is that previous moment. If we acknowledge our own realities, if we are body and mind, and I include uh, our uh, nervous system and brain in the body because it can be seen uh, studied, analyzed, uh, but not the mind. The mind cannot be seen. The m it is complex, but I would like to define it in a very simple way. The mind is defined as something that provides a light and is cognitive. It's like a space, like a mirror a very, very clean mirror, and everything that comes before it is reflected, but uh, is also acknowledged. Uh, the mirror cannot do this. It can only reflect an image, but not know who that person in front of it is. But our mind can do that. That is our mind. It's not easy to understand this. We have to spend lots of time reading the texts of the great masters of more than 2,000 years ago. You have to uh, invest a lot of time, but once you've studied that, you need to take that and try to make it uh, easy and see how you can uh, support or uh, help in the world. For example, teachers, how from that knowledge we can reduce stress, anxiety and burnout. How can we help understand how you can develop other aspects of your mind like uh, uh, stability and clarity, which is the capacity of understanding, understanding really well what you are doing uh, when you are doing it to understand the reality of the world when you interact with it and also understand how the outside world is affecting our mind and what is my reaction to that uh, world outside. On many occasions, my master said, the problem is not in the world, as the professor said before. The problem is not in what we're going to do, but in how we handle things, how we react to that uh, outside world. We think that the world is this, what we share in the streets with others. That is the shared world. The world that in which we live is what we live inside our bodies and minds, what we uh, have inside, not what's outside. Because the problem is not out there. The problem is in how I react inside to those uh, outside events. How can we learn to have a control? And I don't like to use the term control. So how can we have access to see? Yeah, I have to use this term. How can we control our mental processes if when we're doing something, our attention, that important uh, uh, factor that William Jair, the father of American psychology, made reference to, is so important in education. He said, 
that education that took into account the development of attention would be an excellent education. Our attention, our focus is on what we are doing right when it's happening. And there's another mental factor that can be also developed exponentially, and that is what I what I'm doing now is what I want to do. Is it correct? Is the motivation to do this for myself and for the world is the correct one? And that's, uh, at the end of the day, awareness and uh, conscience, which can be developed uh, through time and exponentially. So now, after that many years of studying the mind, Once a master told me that a disciple in Japan wanted to go to school to paint bamboo, the art of uh, bamboo that is so well known in Japan. So he went to his master and said, I want to paint uh, bamboo. And he, he said, perfect. Come here. Sit down and you can start tomorrow. Here you have a room where you can uh, do this. And on the next day, he brought him to a courtyard and uh, he was right in front of the bamboo. And he said, look at the bamboo. And he said, yeah, I come to paint, but first you have to observe the bamboo and then paint it later on. And uh, to uh, not take too long, uh, I'm going to summarize. And uh, he was there for a year. And after a year, he said, I'm leaving. And he said, no, don't leave now, because now it's when you're going to paint. And when he painted, uh, he did it uh, perfectly, because he had been observing them for so long. With uh, uh, whatever technique, if we're able to observe uh, uh, and look uh, um, uh, into our mind and how it works and how it can be developed will allow us to progress in a self-knowledge where we will be able to solve incredible problems and see how we can start from scratch because we can understand that the nature of our mind allows it. It's like a mirror. You get a, an image in the mirror, but there's nothing there anymore. And our mind is the same. We have memories, and sometimes we uh, believe that we were, we are, and we will be. But we are confused regarding this. We can always do whatever we want in whatever moment. We can improve. We can, at all times, develop internal skills of our heart, but also of our intelligence. We can develop a kindness, altruism. Let's not forget of others. If we forget about others, then there's no life doesn't make sense anymore. First of all, we have to develop ourselves uh, and develop uh, uh, intelligence, wisdom, understanding, and understanding things uh, by uh, ourselves. And I wanted to stop here. And I wanted to share with you, and I don't know if we have time, uh, five minutes. And I'm going to share something, that, and it's the first time that I share this. When I go anywhere to try and help uh, others in different uh, places, working with groups, associations, cancer associations, in uh, prisons here in Spain and in Mexico, and I would like to share with you something that I've never uh, shared before, and it's a, a letter, a very special letter. A ver, si de con mi gafa. <laughs> On the year 2018, I was one of the biggest uh, uh, um, prisons in Spain, in Acebuche, in Almería, and I just uh, gave them a talk, and I was there for an hour and a half, more or less. And then I left and uh, went back to the monastery. And on the 18th of December, I received this letter that I, I would like to share with you uh, because of a very simple reason, so that you can see how someone 
through calm, patience, knowledge, and a good heart can change the life of someone else. You are teachers. You can change the lives of so many people on so many moments and help them not only be uh, um, have a life, but ha be incredible human beings with values. And the letter said as, says as follows. Uh, hello, Mr. Uh, Deng, uh, which uh, my name is Horacio. And you probably don't remember me. When I met you, it was in the respect of module number eight, and you came to speak with us about vipassana. Vipassana is a meditation that means understanding beyond what our physical uh, senses uh, allow <laughs> us to. But unfortunately, we can do uh, do so. I wanted to do a vipassana with them, but we couldn't do so because we didn't get the permits from the ministry. Even though the uh, prison uh, director uh, said that this uh, was uh, going to be feasible. Well, I don't think that will be possible, but as I was saying, I want to go back to your words. Many of your words uh, remained in my mind, especially when you talked about conscience. It was very helpful for me, and I realized many things. It was uh, being in prison was a very harsh experience. I never imagined I would go through this experience in my life. On many occasions, I thought about taking my life because I didn't want to live like this. My life didn't make a sense in prison. It made sense when I was with my family, friends, and had a job. But from uh, one day to the other, with a, a because of a. Uh, a lie, my life became what it is now. But only those that have gone through this uh, prison experience understand what this is. But my, I don't want to just uh, tell you about uh, what is happening, but I would like to know if through a letter you can provide me and give me advice on meditating. Of course, I wrote uh, to him and we were in contact and he continues. I try every day, but uh, my mind doesn't focus, but this can be developed and I cannot uh, strike a balance. Every day I try to have positive um, thoughts, and I read everything I, I can on self-help, and I'm uh, being sent many books. I am sure meditation will save me. I uh, um, want uh, this more than freedom. Even you might not believe so. I want this to be a positive experience for me, and not only a place of punishment, but also a place of reflection. I've gone through very difficult times. I've uh, been in the worst of situations, even though this was uh, an ongoing suffering. I've been also able to get to know myself, and I've realized the problem wasn't uh, outside but inside me. Now I'm in a moment of reflection, looking inwards. I thank the sun every day when it uh, provides me with uh, heat and light. I am thankful and grateful for everything I have, and I do not uh, think about those uh, things that I uh, miss. I believe everything I'm going through is for a reason and for my personal growth. A long time ago, I thought just the opposite uh, way. I lived uh, in anguish and desperation. But when I started to change uh, my way of seeing things, things improved. Now I am in charge of the workshop. I also work in the kitchen at breakfast time. And as I said before, I work in the metal uh, workshop and I'm getting uh, paid. The uh, My relationship with the, the workers here at prison has improved so much. So everything has improved, but I still have that feeling, that desire of uh, having peace 
in my heart. And I am sure meditation would be the path to achieve this. If you can please help me, I would be very grateful. There's nothing more I need in life. I just want to find peace through meditation. I know you don't know me, and I've been a bit bold in writing to this, but actually I knew who he was because I knew my mind for 17 years. And if I know who I am, I know who everybody else is. Everybody else is not unknown for me. I've been in this prison for 18 months now. Many unpleasant things have happened, unfortunately. But I think that in all transformations, pain is necessary. When a, a worm becomes a butterfly, it goes through a process. That's the kind of transformation that I want for my life. I want to die internally, but then become reborn, reborn to a completely different life a change of consciousness. I've achieved a lot in recent years. I just had to become aware of that. I know there's still a lot for me to do, and I'd like to finish by saying thanks to you for having spent some time with me, for having planted some seeds in my heart. They're now sprouting, and I'm thankful for that even if you don't reply to my letter. And of course, I did reply to his letter. Thank you very much, Horacio Real Garcia. I apologize for my writing and for the mistakes. I am just writing from my heart and improvising at the same time. Thank you. On that note, I'd like to finish. <laughs>